dive into tonight. I've got my notes ready. I'm ready to go. And basically, uh, what we've been able to do is since we've started, we've been able to purchase millions of dollars of businesses, commercial real estate to kind of go along with those businesses uh, with zero of our own money. So uh, we've been able to leverage either other people's money or uh, the sellers or get creative on how we've structured deals to be able to literally buy businesses and not spend any of our own money. So we're going to show you exactly how to do that tonight. Uh, in fact, by the end of this webinar, you're going to know the steps uh, that you can use to flip businesses or commercial property in a fraction of the time that it took us to be able to figure it out with no money of your own, with very little training, and you can do it in your spare time, uh, literally five to 10 hours a week. In fact, I'm gonna show you people that have done it in five to 10 hours a week. So, um, and how much they've made and exactly how they do it. So we're gonna show you all that. So it's gonna be some very good information. Now, why are we doing this? We, and I'm gonna introduce you a little bit more about who we are and where we come from, but uh, we're being contacted daily from, I mean, daily, multiple times a day from opportunity seekers, investors, and people wanting to be a part of the movement that's going on. Now, what movement am I talking about? I've talked a little bit about this in our webinars, and or, I'm sorry, in some of our videos. If you've been to our YouTube channel, you may have seen some of these, but EPI, that stands for the Exit Planning Institute. Believe it or not, there is an institute that tracks exit planning uh, by people who are exiting their business, they're selling their business. And so they track all these statistics and I mean, many, many things. They, they're a great resource. In fact, if you just Google them, Exit Planning Institute, but they estimate that four and a half million businesses are gonna transition over the next uh, 10 years. Now, representing $10 trillion of value. Now, this is a, a huge transfer of wealth that's going to be happening. So when I when I talk about movement, this is what I'm talking about. And two thirds of the small to medium sized businesses, SMBs as we could call them, are owned by baby boomers. And of all of the ones that go up for sale, only 10 to 20 percent of those are actually going to sell. Now we've talked about this in some of our videos, and it, uh, I tell you, it's every time I say it, every time I mention it. I'm still shocked by that. That means over 80% of the businesses that go up for sale are available to be purchased. And, and most of these, a lot of them are good businesses. These are businesses that are, uh, they're profitable. They're doing great numbers, great revenue. They've been around 10, 20, 30 years. They've got a great uh, management. They've got good customer base. They've got good employees. They've built some systems. And the problem is there's just not enough buyers. And we're going to talk a little bit about that um, as we keep going here. So our goal primarily is we want to democratize M&A or mergers and acquisitions. You know, when you think of mergers and acquisitions, you think of the big Wall Street bankers and uh, the investment bankers and the guys with the MBAs that went to Harvard and, and all this stuff. But really what we want to do is put together a community where we can come together and learn from each other and build a system and a, and a platform where really a lot of people can do it who may not have otherwise had the opportunity. So we want to build one of the largest M&A communities in the country and profit from this, the largest transfer of wealth in a generation. And we want you to be a part of it. And so that's why we're doing this. So to go through quickly tonight's schedule, uh, we're going to talk about a few things. Now, uh, being blue ocean investing, we like to come up with cute little names for what we're going to be talking about. So tonight's float plan. Uh, if you've ever been on the water or gone out to sea, a lot of times you, the captain will file a float plan to let people back on land know where he's going to be in case there's an emergency. Uh, so tonight's float plan is uh, first we're going to talk about who's the who the captain is. I'm going to tell you a little bit about who I am, who the heck are you know am I, and why should you listen to me? Uh, then we're going to go into the voyage, how we got here. Then we're going to, let's eat a little bit. Let's, instead of meat and potatoes, we're calling it surf and turf. So we're going to get uh, into the nitty gritty and we're going to talk about some different things. And then we're going to talk about our deal structure in shipbuilding. And I'm going to take you through three specific deals that we did. I'm going to show you 
all the details about it. You'll see exactly how we put these deals together. It's so cool. I love talking about this. Then we're going to talk about our navigational charts. Uh, this is this will be mapping out a plan for you. Um, and then we're going to have some uh, questions and answers uh, that I'll answer there at the end. I may click on there a few times in the meantime and, and try to answer some questions as I see them pop up. But a lot of them I'll probably I may answer throughout it. So I'll uh, keep going probably until the end. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, several of you may have gotten some notes that we emailed out to everyone. Just really, it's more of a notes page where you can take some notes. If not, blank sheet of paper will do. Press the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom bar, and you can click on that to ask a question. And for those of you that stay to the end, we're going to send you a recording of this webinar. And I will say that there are a couple of technical parts where it is good to go back and re-watch it. So uh, if you want to copy that recording, stick around to the end. We'll be able to see who, um, who all stuck around, and we'll make sure that we get that to you. Now, let's dive right into uh, who the heck is Chris Isbell? Why should, why should you listen to me? Well, to give you a little bit of my background, I grew up like maybe a lot of you did. Uh, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. I grew up dreaming. I was, uh, my parents were in Amway growing up. It, it raised a show of hands. Any of you guys on Amway <laughs> or been in Amway? Well, I, I grew up in that and I grew up going to dream weekends and uh, hanging out at fancy hotels with uh, my parents around all the super successful people that had the motor coaches and uh, all the different uh, diamond rings and all the cool stuff. And I just, I wanted to be that. Uh, I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30. In fact, when I got married uh, at the age of 21, I told my wife, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I, I dropped out of high school. I'm sorry. I graduated high school, dropped out of college and went straight into work. And I ended up working pretty much right out of high school for a um, delivery company, a food delivery company. Now, this is back in 1977, this picture you see here. This is a truck that I drove, and this was the good side of the truck. The other side had a quarter panel missing and a rusted out door frame. And I took this picture and I set it up specifically this way. I was broke. I lived in the trailer you see right behind there. You got the rusted out lamp post. I got the truck that barely ran. And I and I put this car topper on top of the truck and I wanted this picture to remind me back then I said you know what I'm, I want to remember the trailer that I moved my wife into when we got married I want to remember the truck that, that I had to constantly change the oil uh, or put oil in it uh, I said it was a self-changing oil uh, because it just ran out about as quick as I could put it in there <laughs> so it always had fresh oil in it but um, I wanted to remember where I came from. And I wanted to remember the dreams that I had living in this trailer back then. In fact, whenever I was in this trailer, I was up late one night and I knew I wanted to do something with my life. And so I was in the floor, I was probably writing out some goals and on the television came a commercial, one of those infomercials from a guy named Carlton Sheets on how to buy real estate with no money down. And I'm thinking, okay, the people on here doing these testimonials don't seem any smarter than I do and than I am. I, feel, I bet I can figure this out. So I got the course, I cracked it open, and sure enough, I followed a couple of those techniques and I found something that worked. I bought my first house. I cashed out $4,000 when I bought it. I had a couple hundred dollars in monthly cash flow. And I thought, um, wow, this is pretty amazing. I think I'm going to do this again. And I just kept going. I got another one and then I bought some trailers and then I bought a duplex and I had some cash flow coming in. And I just thought, wow, this is, this is a lot of fun. Well, Carlton Sheets and his crew got wind of it and they reached out to me and said, Hey, we'd love to have you down here on our commercial. So they actually flew us down to Fort Lauderdale. This is a picture of uh, my wife and uh, my five week old daughter. She's 18 now. Uh, but she, uh, she was born in 2001. This was in 2001 when we uh, kind of got up to a level where they noticed us and we went down there and here's something real interesting happened down there. In between takes, we were, we were they had cameras everywhere and crew everywhere and uh, in between takes, Carlton Sheets said something to me that I thought was real interesting. He said, you know, Chris, out of all of the people across all the whole country that buy informational products and it doesn't matter what information it is if whatever how to deal that it is whether it's how to buy real estate or how to you know sell businesses on uh, line or how to start your own whatever if everybody that buys those 
only 2% of the people actually do anything with the information. And, I, and that, that really struck me. 98% of people never do anything with the information that they get. And he says, so Chris, you're part of the 2%. And I said, well, that's pretty cool. I felt honored that I was part of the 2%. I was able to make something work. So we kept going. We kept buying real estate. We kept buying rental properties. We kept um, uh, investing in things, eventually turned it into a, I uh, had a construction company and a management company. And I ended up writing a book because I loved business. I loved working on a business. And this was a book. It's called Don't Drive, Be Driven. In fact, you can still buy it on Amazon. I'm not trying to sell you a book. Just basically going to show that from the beginning, I loved business and, and just building something with systems and processes. And that's what this book is about is basically systems and processes. And um, I've always loved that. And we, we kept going. We ended up opening up multifamily developments and, and several different things. But guess what happened? 2008 happened. We, sure enough, I was a millionaire by the time I was 30. I was a multimillionaire at 32, but by 34, I was broke. We had a, it was about an 18 month spiral from about uh, 2006 to uh, 2008 where we just, we bled out. We couldn't sell anything. I had a ton of developments and we just lost it all. And we started over in 2008. I don't know how many of you guys can relate to that, but it happened. And so uh, we started over. I was licking my wounds, and I got started in the real, in sorry, in the insurance business. I got somehow sucked into selling um, life insurance policies door to door, door to door sales, and that's what I used to dig us out of this uh, the hole that we had gotten into after the real estate crash. But slowly, I started getting better. I started getting good at sales. I started getting good at uh, just approaching people and selling them insurance. It got to the point to where I was able to um, hire some other agents and teach them how to be successful. Then I partnered up with some guys, and we started our own agency. And one thing led to another. And before long, we had built a pretty successful national agency. In fact, we had built it into a $26 million agency uh, over the course of several years. And uh, we were doing pretty good. Well, it was then in about 2017, some things started to shift in the market. And I was making great money. I was making mid six figures. And I, but I really was, I was wanting more. Things were starting to shift with the platform I was running on. And I started looking to get back into real estate. So I started doing some research. I started looking at some options. I'd been out of, out of it for about 10 years. And I was thinking, you know, I'd really love to get back into this. Well, I stumbled across those stats that I shared with you earlier about the massive wave of businesses that are coming online for sale and nobody was buying them. So to give to cat, that kind of catches you up to where I'm at. And I want to go through with you kind of how we got into this. And so this was, I call it the birth of Clear Capital. Clear Capital is our mergers and acquisitions company. Website is clearcapitalpartners.com. You can go and check us out. Um, we're uh, buying and selling businesses. And since the insurance was changed, insurance platform was changing, began researching real estate, stumbled across these facts. I've put up a few more here for you here to the right. 89, 80 to 90% of business owners their wealth is tied up in their businesses. 53% of them have, have paid little to no attention to their transition plan. 88% have no written plan. And 66, two thirds of business owners have no plan at all. No plan at all. Maybe some of you guys own your own business and this is describing you. You don't have a plan. In fact, a lot of people don't want to admit they don't have a plan. And so whenever they ask what, whenever they're asked what their plan is, their plan is always three to five years. <laughs> they're always going to, do something in three to five years because they don't really have a plan. It's, it's definitely not written down. Well, 80% have never sought advice about a transition. This is the state of our, of our small business environment right now. And so what I did, I took that information. I said, okay, there's got to be an opportunity here. So what I did is I was familiar with the direct mail industry, uh, being in insurance for 10 years, we mailed our, our company mailed out about a million insurance, I'm sorry, a million uh, pieces of mail a month uh, to generate leads for our insurance agents across the country. So, and we got about a 1% response. Well, I mailed out 500 
to business owners. And all I said, and I'll show you a copy of the letter. I think, I think I've got it in here later. Um, that just basically said, Hey, I came across your business and I'd like to talk to you about buying it. 10% of them called me, 10% called me and wanted to talk about me buying their business from them. Well, I didn't know anything about mergers and acquisitions or how to buy a company and how to value it and what the heck to do and how to make an offer. I didn't, I didn't know any of that stuff. And I couldn't find anywhere in the United States where I could learn that. I mean, it's, it's so, it's, it seems so closed off. I mean, I did, I searched everywhere. So I tell you what I did. I finally found uh, a resource, a guy by the name of Jeremy Harbor, super awesome guy. He's been doing this for years, but he's in the United, he's in the United Kingdom. He's been doing it for doing this stuff for 15 years over there. So I flew to London. I was reluctant. I'm like, man, I don't, I really don't want to do this. I, but I had 50 people wanting to talk to me and I didn't know what to do with it. So I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity here. I've got to learn this. This was back in 2017. So I went over there and I learned and uh, how to structure a deal and how to talk to the sellers and, and all the different things. And uh, that kind of got me over the hump. At least I kind of had some sort of direction. I was pointed in the right direction on where to go. And so I came back here and I hired a marketing guy, and partnered with him and I, I needed to look legitimate. These guys were saying, hey, have you ever done this before? And of course I haven't. So it's almost like you fake it till you make it. But, um, but I came back and I was able to make some offers and I, I had some business cards made up and did some different things. And I hired a team. I, I hired an attorney. I hired a CPA. I hired an operations guy because I'm going to need all this stuff. And, and the way I had to do it is I partnered with these folks. These are people I had relationships with. And I said, hey, I, I'm not going to pay any money, but hey, this looks like a fun opportunity. Let's figure it out together. And so that's what we did. And these folks had backgrounds in mergers and acquisitions and some corporate law and, and different things. And so that's where I ended up going with it. And so finally though, after our, after 11, I'm sorry, one year and 11 months of just figuring it out from going to London, from making tons of offers, from talking to tons of sellers, from, I mean, thousands of hours of just trying to figure it out. We finally closed our first deal. <laughs> this is me signing our, our first deal. And that was a great moment because that's when it validated everything that we were trying to do. So we expanded our team. We went and hired some analysts because you got to do due diligence uh, on the companies you're buying. You, uh, we had our initial pre-offer analysis that we had to do to see what, you know, what, the, what the company was worth. Uh, we hired operators to run the day-to-days. We had consultants that we had to hire. We uh, got sourcing brokers that we started to work with. And so we continued to build that out. Then we kind of hit our stride and we then streamlined our processes. Again, remember I told you I love working on the business and how to make things run efficiently. And, uh, then we continued to close deals. And then we started gaining some uh, momentum and some attention in the M&A community. People started contacting us and wanting to do what we're doing. And then I got invited to speak at uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions training events across the country. And so, uh, and our, and teaching our techniques and how we've been doing things. And, um, and it's, it's been a really fun ride, but here's what I got right guys. And this is, this is really important. Somebody asked me, one of my daughter's friends actually asked me, um, probably a couple months ago now, and this really hit me. They said, you know, you've been successful at three different things. You know, you had the real estate and then you had the insurance and, and now you're doing great at the mergers and acquisitions thing. How, how have you done that? I said, you know, to, to think about it in every instance of success in my life started when I found somebody who'd been where I wanted to go and I followed their playbook. And that's, that's all it is. Just point me in the right direction and show me what to do. And that's, that's all I did. So what I love to say is, you know, sit with the winners. The conversation is different. <laughs> now, I've got a self-deprecating picture over here. Your left. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know Andy Andrews. Uh, he lives in my neighborhood down here in Orange Beach. He's a world-renowned author, speaker. Uh, he's, he is super successful. Google him if you've never heard of him. Buy some of his stuff. He's got some very, very good uh, books out. New York Times bestseller. Um, guy on the right, Zig Ziglar. If you haven't heard of him, You've been living under a rock. He's, of course, not with us anymore, but um, I, I learned so much from him and his books. And, you know, there's so many things that if you just surround yourself with the right people, 
you, it, they're going to rub off on you. So after 27 years in business, what I discovered is there's a definite hard way and there's a definite easier way. And I've really learned to take the path of, of least resistance. If there's a shortcut, I want to take it. Um, I was terrible in school. That's why I barely passed high school. I dropped out of college because I hated school because it took too long to get there to, to the tests and all the stuff. Just give me the shortcut. Show me who can help me get there. I love collaborating. And in school, they call that cheating. So, but it's not a matter of how, it's a matter of who. You know, don't spend so much time figuring out how to do something. Find who knows already. <laughs> Just go and take the path of least resistance. That's what I love to do. So we're about to get into the meat and potatoes here, or surf and turf, as I like to call it. Um, and this is the good stuff. And we're going to get to a couple of slides here real quick that um, if, you're, if you're in a noisy place, I want you to sit down, do something, shut yourself in a closet uh, where you can take some notes because we're about to get into some, some, a couple of deep slides. I like to call it whole crush depth. This submarine is going to, we're going to go deep, but I'll bring you back up quick, I promise, okay? So you won't, you won't drown. Um, here's the argument for flipping companies uh, and their properties as opposed to say residential real estate because there's a lot of real estate folks I know that, in fact, that's the majority of the folks that have been contacting us or, or these real estate wholesalers and investors. But here's the thing, nobody's doing it. Um, there's a really good reason, I'm gonna tell you here in a minute. Uh, there's much higher profits on it. There's a huge amount of inventory a massive amount of inventory, and it's a great deal for the cash buyers, for the investors that you're flipping it to, and I'm gonna show you that in just a little bit. And there's a lot of opportunities to grow beyond the real estate. In fact, we make money three different ways. We make money when we sell the properties. So we'll buy a company and a property. I'm gonna show you a diagram in a minute. Uh, we'll flip the company. So we make money when we buy it, we make money when we're running it, and then we make money when we sell the business. So there's multiple streams of income here that you can actually do. Now, I'm a when I talk about flipping properties, okay, flipping companies, all right, who, who the heck are we flipping these to? Introducing the sale lease back. Now, this isn't anything new. This isn't something we invented. Uh, this is stuff that's, that's been around for a long time. But I want to explain this because um, when I first started doing these, I would just go, kind of go straight into it, not really explain this part, and people were lost. So here's where we're going to get a little detailed for a second because I want to explain how this works. Some of you may already know, if you know, great, this would be a good refresher, but just so everyone's clear and we're all on the same page, I want to make sure that uh, everyone knows what this is. So here's a typical situation for a sale leaseback situation. Let's say John Doe owns an auto repair store. He's owned it for 15 years, all right? And not only does he own his business, but he owns the property that his business operates out of. So he owns the building and the land, and then he also owns John's Auto Repair. So he's got the property and he's got the business. All right, should make sense. Some businesses, actually many businesses, don't own their property. They rent the property out from someone else, from a landlord. So when you own a property, there's a lot of locked up capital in that building. And say John needs to, uh, let's say, um, invest in some equipment or he wants to. Uh, buy another location, or he, shoot, he just, maybe he's got some debt he needs to pay off. Whatever the reason is, um, he needs some money. And the best way he can get it is somehow tapping into that property. He also wants to get some debt off of his balance sheet. So he can take that property and sell it to an investor. And then the investor pays John the cash. Let's say the Building's worth a million dollars. He pays John a million dollars. Maybe John owns, uh, maybe he owes the bank half a million on it. So he pays the bank off and he keeps a half a million dollars and that puts some money in his pocket. And then what uh, John will do is through his business, his business will then rent the property back from the investor. Thus the name sale lease back. So he sold it and then he's leasing it back. Now the investor makes a good return on his investment. Uh, because John has a profitable business that can support the rent. Now, there's several groups and funds that are interested in sell leasebacks because it's a good investment uh, or investing in commercial property. Now, you've got commercial real estate. Um, let's see here. You've got commercial real estate investors that just buy commercial real estate. You've got uh, what's called REITs, real estate investment trusts. 
a lot, most of those, in fact, uh, invest in commercial buildings. You've got investment groups. Some of them are small. Some of them are large. You've got some what you, call, what you call family offices. These are a little more nimble. They don't have as much red tape. They can make decisions faster. Uh, they're called family offices because they're small and they're run by a couple of guys that uh, kind of know what they're doing. Um, then you've got 1031 tax-free exchange investors. Uh, for those of you that don't know, just a quick what that is, 1031 is if you sell a property, the government allows you to not touch the money you made on it and hold it in an escrow account. And then you can go find another property that's like it. And then you can buy that property with those funds. You don't have to pay the taxes on it. It defers those taxes. So there's funds out there of 1031 money uh, that are looking for things to buy and they love commercial property. So these are the types of investors that'll buy it. And we've built relationships along our journey here with multiple investment groups that are looking for these solid investments. All right, so let's look at a sale leaseback. That's what SLV stands for, as an acquisition strategy. So let's say John, he's ready to retire. He owns John's Auto Repair. He's done, he's been doing this for 30 years. He's tired of the employees, he's tired of the customers, but he doesn't want to close. He puts his business up for sale, he can't sell it. Um, because really the only market of people, of buyers that he's gonna sell it to are people that maybe it's a competitor across town um, and there's just maybe not many or maybe the competitor can't afford it, whatever the case may be. So he owns his property and he owns the business. Well, what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll put a purchase agreement on John's business. We've kind of looked at the numbers, Everything looks good, he's profitable, he's making some money. And so we'll draw up two purchase agreements. We'll draw up one for the property and we'll draw up a separate one for the business. We'll treat the business as an asset sale um, as opposed to buying the shares of the business and then we'll buy the property. So we've got two different agreements. Then what we do is we make that uh, property agreement, the contract about the property, we make it assignable. So we can then assign it to one of our investors. We've already got the investors lined up. We know what they're looking for. So we can target properties that they would be interested in. Um, we, we know what their criteria is. And then the property though, the money we make from that investor on the property actually usually funds most of the purchase price because most of the value that John has in his business is the property. So, the business then will rent the property back from the investor and the investor makes a good ROI on it. Well, then we've got some other things that are happening over here that um, as the business is paying rent, the business is spitting off some stuff. We'll take the business then and we'll put it in what we call a basket of other like kind businesses. So let's say we've also got uh, Doug's Auto Repair, uh, in addition to John's auto repair, we got Keith's auto repair, we got Sally's auto repair, we got, you know, several auto repair businesses that we bought exactly this way. Every single one of them, we flipped the property, made some money flipping the property, then we'll take the business, bundle it together, create some synergies. And so now we'll take the bundle of businesses and we sell them all off to a large buyer because now it's attractive because it's making more money. That's a whole nother conversation. So we're making money from the operations. We're making money when we exit. Now, there is a million moving parts with everything on the right side of this graph. That's why I put the submarine on it. There's a lot going on there. A lot of departments and systems and processes that we had to build to make that happen. So we're gonna stay over here tonight on the left-hand side because that's the fastest way you can make money. That's the quickest way and the easiest way. So we're gonna live right over here to the left for tonight. We're not gonna get into all that other stuff. That's for another conversation. Now, what's in it for our investors? It's a safe collateralized investment vehicle. They've got the property. They get a return rate of seven to 10% with annual increases. These leases that we signed with them, they get annual increases. They're gonna get a return. They get a long-term tenant. They're not looking at um, you know, a one year lease where they own, you know, say some rental property of houses and they end up, um, you know, getting several tenants that are there for 12 months and then they're moving, they have to come in and turn it around. These are 10 to 15 year leases. These are long term leases. Not only that, but they're what's called a triple net lease. A triple net lease means that the tenant pays for all of the stuff. They pay for the insurance, they pay for the taxes, they pay for the maintenance. 
all of that, and then they uh, can either hold it and keep getting their seven to ten percent, or they can sell it for a higher price to another investor. Let's so let's say we got a you know a ten thirty one guy or maybe a private guy who's got some cash and he buys it. He can then turn around once the lease is established and there's maybe twelve months worth of uh, rent coming in. He can then sell it to one of these REITs or one of these bigger funds, and he can make a good return on his money. So for our investors, it is a great return on their investment. Now, here's the main off. Remember when I told you earlier that nobody's flipping commercial property? Well, here's why. Here's why nobody's doing it. The main obstacle is for the property to have value, it's that property is directly tied to the revenue from a lease. So I had someone ask me before if we if they can do this with vacant commercial property. The answer is no, um, because the real value, unless there's someone that they know is going to be moved in and, and actually renting it, um, the main value is tied up in that revenue. Now, the value of the lease is tied to the strength of the tenant. Okay, that makes sense. The cash flow from that business it has to support the lease. I hope you guys are following me here. So here's the deal, here's the bottom line. The deal has to be paired with a solid business that's responsible for the lease. So you can't just walk up to John's auto repair and say, I wanna flip your business and John's gonna be moving out. <laughs> He's gonna be shutting down. There's not value to that. So John's business has to keep operating uh, and there has to be a lease in place for that value to be there. What we've done is we've spent the last few years creating systems and deal structures to maintain that healthy operating business to secure the lease, thereby maintaining the value of the property. Now, I'm gonna run through that again real quick. If you've been distracted or if there's something going on, make sure that you're, you're paying attention right here. This is the most important part. The value of the property that I'm talking about flipping to make the quick cash is directly tied to revenue that's coming in from the lease, from the business that's leasing it back. Well, the value of that lease is tied to the strength of the business tenant. You can't have a business that's losing money that's responsible for the lease because they can't pay it. It has to be a healthy business because the cash flow from the business is what has to support the lease. See how it's all tied together? So the deal has to be paired with a solid business that's responsible for it. And so what we've had to do, the hard part and the tricky part, is creating systems and deal structures that maintain that healthy business. So the value of the property is maintained. So keep that in mind as we go through. Now here's where we're getting into the good stuff. Now you can come up for air, you can come up for air. I'm gonna show you exactly how one of these deals work. These, I'm gonna show you three deals. I'm gonna show you our very first deal that we did and some things we learned. I'm going to show you our second deal, which we implemented some things we learned on the first deal. And then I'm going to show you our most profitable deal. So these are the, th these are the ones I'm going to go through here to give you an idea of what we're targeting. So you guys know, we target uh, the types of companies that we consider Amazon proof. Now, what we mean by Amazon proof is they are the types of businesses that it's going to be hard for Amazon to come in and take over the market. Um, I'll show you some examples of those here in just a second. We wanted them to be five years in business or more because if a business is going to fail, they will have failed within the first five years. We want them to have five or more employees, preferably with some management in place, uh, where the owner can leave if he needs to, uh, take a vacation, that kind of stuff. Um, cause it, honestly, if the owner has to be there 60 hours a week, you, we, we usually don't want it because if the, if the owner is selling, he is the business and he's going to be leaving. So we want other people there that he's trained and they've been there a while. Um, 500,000 to 5 million in revenue. We call this the five, five, five rule, five years of business, five or more employees, 500 to 5 million in revenue, preferably with real estate, as you can see why uh, we like it so much, but it's not required. We can do deals without real estate. Uh, and we want open-minded owners because we do want to get creative or have the ability to get creative at certain times. Uh, we've identified 26 different verticals that we are interested in. There are more, uh, but here's some of them. Right now we're heavy in childcare. Childcare is a great profitable industry to be in. 
Uh, in fact, the, the, the three uh, deals I'm going to show you are all in the child care uh, industry. Uh, pet boarding, auto repair, uh, heating and air, plumbing, pest control. These are all types of companies that it's going to be hard for Amazon to replace. They, they're not going to be able to watch your kid, board your pet, or fix your car in most cases. Um, you're going to have to have a physical location and somebody's going to have to go to that physical location. So it's going to be hard to do that on the internet. Uh, you know, plumbing, servicing, uh, heating and air when your air goes out, or in this case, when it's 20 degrees down here tonight, uh, we want our heat to work and we're calling a heating and air guy if it doesn't work. Uh, pest control, uh, dry cleaning, those are all types of things. There's, there's several more, uh, but those are some of them to give you kind of an idea of what we do look at. Now, Let's get into our first deal. Uh, this is a learning center that we picked up in Georgia. This was our very first one, uh, the one that took us a year and 11 months to, <laughs> to close on. Uh, we found this deal, the sell price was 1.3 million. It had a revenue um, at the time that we were looking at it of 340,000, not a ton, that's under our threshold, I get it. We were eager to get a deal done, so we did it. Um, uh, the profit at operation or the operational profit, um, that it made every year was 600, I'm sorry, $60,000 a year. And the reason for selling the owners were motivated. They had bought a security business and they were ready to unload this and move on to their new security business. So they were looking to sell and they were pretty motivated. So we got the information on this and we took this to our investment group and we said, Hey, how much would you give us for this building? So this is a, an idea of don't pay attention to a lot of those other numbers. I've thrown, thrown it in here so you can kind of see some of the structure on this. But basically what this amounts to, if you look at the number that's circled down there at the bottom, we get an estimated net proceeds of $674,000 and change. So that's when we sold it, that's what we could anticipate getting. Well, then we take this information that we know we can sell. And this is based on the market and the rents and the different things. Then we'll take this and we'll make an offer. Now, this offer, how we structure it is we are, they were asking a million three. We said, we'll give you a million bucks. We're going to give you 675,000 at closing. If you remember the previous slide, how much did we get there? 674, 985. We'll give them 675 and we asked them to carry a seller note for 325,000. That made up the million bucks. The rest of that, everything under there on, towards the bottom is just the terms of that seller note how long the note's for. We've got um, worksheets that automatically calculate all of this and generate this offer for us. Uh, we've built all this out. So let me sum this up for you. So for a million dollars, we asked the seller uh, to carry 325,000 of that. The cash at closing that we had to come up with then was the 675,000. So we flipped the property uh, and these are simultaneous closes by the way. So when we buy, all of it. We immediately flip the property. Then we get 674,985 when we flip that. The seller wanted 675,000. So we had to come up with $15 out of pocket. Now these are round numbers. There's closing costs and stuff. But again, as I showed you, most of those came out of uh, the proceeds of the sale. So we didn't have to pay for them. But we got into this with no money down. Well, 15 bucks, you know, cost us $15. <laughs> but we bought a business for $15. How amazing is that? Well, um, we uh, learned from that and I'll show you in a second here how we did that. Well, the challenge with this was it was light on cash flow. Like I said, it was only doing 340,000 or whatever it was. And uh, our solution to that was when we bought it, uh, it was only open five hours a day, five days a week. It wasn't even open in the morning. So uh, we've since gone in and we're putting in a, what's called a mom's day out program where we're open now the five hours in the morning, five days a week. So we've doubled the amount of hours we're open, uh, doubled enrollment. And so now it makes more sense and it's able to make more money. So we got to thinking, well, shoot, if we can buy a business for 15 bucks, I wonder if we can actually make a little bit of money on this thing. So here's deal number two, sale price 2.1 million. Revenue on this one was much healthier uh, than the last one. Uh, she was bringing in $836,000. The operational profit she was making after all of her expenses, 150,000 a year, and she was retiring. She'd been doing this for several years and she was ready to be done. She wanted to move to another state and be with the grandkids and uh, ready to hang it up. So, 
Uh, she ended up uh, putting this on the market. We came across it and got all the information from her uh, that we needed to kind of do our analysis on it. And we took the property to our investor and we said, how much will you give us for the building? Well, you see the circled number down there at the bottom. Uh, we would have ended up with a million nine hundred ninety thousand dollars uh, in change. So we went back to her and we said, "Tell you what, we'll give you your two point one million sale price, as you can see here, uh, as the initial contract price." Now, a, a brief side note, time out. Brief side note: If you'll notice up top, uh, we we allocate a portion of it towards the property and then a portion of the proceeds to the business. So um, to come up with the 2.1, now there's some tax strategies by that where we can actually make money by flipping this property and not pay any taxes on it. Again, that's another discussion, but just a quick side note on the reason we structure it and allocate some of the property and some of the business like that. Um, so we offered her a million eight ninety in closing, uh, at closing in cash. And if she would take back a $210,000 uh, seller note, again, all the rest of the information under there is uh, the terms of that note. By the way, this is a, a, um, uh, an actual copy of this, the form that we gave her. Uh, so you guys can kind of see that. So here's the structure, 2.1 million, 210,000 seller financing. That's 10, we asked her to carry 10%, which by the way is very, normal and common in, in a lot of these small business sales. In fact, the, the um, SBA loans require you to require the seller to carry a 10% uh, or, or, or hold it before they, they got to hold it for three years, I think, before they get it. Um, the cash to a closing was a million eight ninety. We flipped the property like I showed you before for a million nine ninety. And we gave her the million eight ninety, which means we made a hundred grand. How cool is that? <laughs> Well, the challenge on this one was securing the seller note. She was nervous about carrying 200 grand without any security. We can't put any lien on the property because we're selling it. So she wanted some security. So what we told her we'd do is we would establish an escrow account. Okay, Miss um, Seller, we will put um, $50,000 in an escrow account that can sit there until uh, for 12 months. And if we're late on a payment in 12 months, then you can tap into that and get your money. Um, that made her comfortable. So that helped us get the deal done. So we put 50,000 of that hundred grand in an escrow account. So still our money and 50,000 of it, we got in cash. In fact, uh, here's a screenshot, 46,371. That was, uh, how that played out. Um, and we wanted to be able to, um, I took a screenshot of this. We didn't get a check because they do wire transfers. Um, I wish it was a check, but I know I've got a couple of questions up here. So I'm going to answer up here. Let's see. We've got da, 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 Abe ask like the cap rate. Um, Dave, I'm going to talk. See, do I talk about cap rates? The cap rates we're paying are anywhere from eight to 10%. Um, 10% I know is high. We structure our deals where we can uh, be able to pay the um, uh, the investor and make it worth it for them. So we give them a healthy return on, on their investment because you know at the end of the day, they're taking a risk and we want them to be rewarded for that. Um, but we've got a whole nother training where we'll go through cap rates and a lot of those details. Um, uh, Eric says, this is overwhelming. <laughs> uh, we will provide you, Eric, if you do stay on till the end, uh, we will, uh, we will give you the uh, recording so you can watch it again. Uh, let's see, Aaron, seems like these businesses are selling for a little more than the real estate they own. So it seems you need to find a business that are selling very cheap together with the real estate. Well, here's the deal, Aaron, you know, at the end of the day, as long as the seller gets their whole price or at least close to it, uh, then they're happy. It doesn't really, if you can make most of it up with the real estate, then absolutely. And, but I, my next deal I'm about to show you, Aaron, um, it's actually, there was a bigger difference. <laughs> so I'll show you that. Um, Abe, I asked that question because you mentioned the lease amount is connected to the business revenue. Well, um, the, it, the business revenue has to support the lease payment that you're paying. And there, there's a whole nother thing called EBITDAR coverages. I'm not getting into all that tonight. 
Uh, but you do have to stay within those coverage ratios for and and so sometimes the building may be worth and we do run into situations where maybe a building is worth two million dollars but the building would but the business will only support say a hundred thousand dollars a year in rent and if you run a cap rate of ten percent on that that means the business is only worth ten percent I'm sorry um, only worth a million dollars so that's the situation where it's going to be hard to make it work. There's other ways you can structure a deal to, to still get there with the seller. But, um, but yes, the business has to support it. And again, that cap rate does play a factor in that. I hope that helps answer your question. Um, Darius, this is great stuff. I think so too, Darius. And I love talking about it. Um, let's see, Aaron's going to some business out there. Oh yeah. There's, there's plenty of business out there. Um, let's see, James, what is the 7% closing cost to clear capital? So we have what we call a, if you, you must have picked up on that on the sheet I showed you. We have what's called a cost recovery fee. We spend a lot of money on the acquisitions part of our business. And I won't go into a lot of detail on this, um, but we build into the sale price of these properties, a fee that just, it basically helps cover all of this. David says, so how to get in? It's a good question, David. I'm gonna show you that here in the end um, on how you can get plugged in. So I'm gonna click those that I've answered them. All right, good deal. I'm gonna show you this next one now. Now this one is our biggest one, uh, our most profitable one. Let me, let me put it to you that way. Um, let me make this work. There we go. All right. This is Arkansas. Uh, these are uh, actually three centers, three different locations that we picked up. And the sale price on this was $4.1 million. That's what she was asking for it. Uh, her revenue was $2,435,000. She was running a pretty tight ship. She was doing a great job. She was profiting over half a million dollars a year uh, with her operations. Now, uh, the reason she was selling, she wanted to retire. And so, in fact, she'd been doing this for 30 years, never married, never had kids, owned five daycares, had sold two of them already, and these were the three left that she had. Uh, she had done a great job, one of the best people I've ever worked with. We still have a great working relationship. So we took those three properties to uh, our investors and said, hey, how much would you give us for these, based on all these numbers, and uh, came up with uh, net proceeds of, uh, $3,807,000. Now, if you remember, she was asking 4.1. All right, so we're pretty close. We get excited when we send over uh, valuations and, and it comes back as more supported by the market and all that stuff. So just to see what would happen, this is the offer that I made, for, made to her. I said, all right, we'll give you $4 million. That's only $100,000 less than what you asked. We'll give you 3.2 million in cash. And if you'll take back $800,000, all right? So that's 80% of the sale price in cash. So that was the offer that we made to her. So, um, and she took, she took the offer. There was a little bit of back and forth and a couple other things we did, but not to get bogged down in those details, this is the basic structure of the deal. So $4 million price tag, she financed 800,000. Uh, the cash to the seller um, at closing to her was the 3.2 million that we offered. Uh, now, if you remember, we were able to flip those properties for $3,807,000. We gave her 3.2, $600,000 we made flipping those three buildings. And then we owe her 800,000. Now, here was the challenge on this one. Uh, the size and the security of the seller note, 800 grand. I mean, that's almost a million dollars we're asking her to carry. Now, she liked the idea of carrying it. She didn't really need the money. In fact, she got most of the 3.2 million because her buildings were completely paid for. She'd owned them for so long. She had done a really good job with this business. So she's got plenty of cash, but still 800 grand is a lot. Well, um, so we had to do a couple things. So what we did is we allowed her to file a UCC, which is a lien basically on what's called FF and E. That's uh, uh, another term in uh, the M&A world stand for furnitures, fixtures, and equipment. So everything inside the building, we let her file a lien on it. Uh, plus the vans, she had some you know, vans that she used to pick up kids. 
Um, and then she also, on one of the properties, uh, she had two commercial lots that were in front of it that were on the main road. Well, that had really no value to our investors because there was no rent that came in on that. What they're really buying is the rent coming in. So we carved out those two lots and kept them and we allowed her to put a lien then on those two lots first added security. All of that added together, the furnitures, the fixtures, the equipment, the vans, the lots, everything, uh, total value on that was guess what? About 800 grand. So we let her put a lien on all of it and she felt comfortable. And so we moved on. In fact, here's uh, the deposits that day. This was back in uh, August. So this was very recent. Um, we um, cashed out there $609,000. So, you know, round numbers, there's six deposits there because of the three buildings. We got two deposits per building. Um, I can't remember why, but that's how they, that's how they structured the deal. So that's our biggest one. And that's how that one worked. Let me scroll down real quick on this other one and see where I'm at. All right, I'm gonna look at some questions here real quick because I know I've got a couple. Um, let's see, James. So the whole period of the business is less than five years because we have a balloon. So is that when we pull more? Okay, yeah, James. So what we do, uh, we put five-year balloons. In fact, some of our businesses have three-year balloons. Uh, the goal then would either be to pay them off ourselves, but our goal is to sell the businesses well before then uh, together as a whole and pay them off. So uh, we, we don't want to hold these for any really longer than two years, uh, maybe a little longer than that. So we build in three to five year balloons uh, to give us enough time to be able to do that. So um, let me hit done on those. Great questions. And one more question. If there's such a large opening in the market, why invite other competitors to eat at the table? What do you gain from teaching us? That is a great question. So there is plenty to go around. And here's the problem. There are 28 million businesses in this country, 28 million. 80% of them aren't going to sell. 65% of them uh, would are owned by baby boomers and there's no way that we can do this by ourselves. We, there, I mean, in fact, I talk a little bit later. Um, we're not able, we're not able to get to all of them. So we can, one of, one of two things, we can either see what we can get on our own or we can partner with people and get a small piece of a lot of things. I'm going to go over that in just a second. So I'll be answering more about that. Kevin, what's the first qualifier you look for and start to move forward? Um, uh, and also, Abe, I will say this. Um, I've always operated on a abundance mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset. And if you'll find the most successful people in life are very willing to share information, there's plenty to go around. The other reason, Abe, is like I told you before at the beginning of this, 98% of the people that have this information aren't going to do anything with it. <laughs> so as long as you'll be the part of the 2%, you'll be able to tap into it. So it doesn't matter how many people we tell about it. Most of them aren't going to do anything with it anyway. And that's just the cold hard truth. Uh, so I'm going to go through those. All right. Now this slide, our attorney makes us put this up. Results are not typical. Individuals results may vary. And if you remember our goal at this, we want to build again, uh, the largest M&A community in the country. Abe, this is more of your question. Um, we did have two choices in this. First, we could keep it to ourselves and grab what we could. Uh, see, I knew that question was coming. That's why I put this slide here. Uh, second option, it requires some investment, but we can develop some solid associate relationships with folks um, and share the wealth and we can go further together. And it just makes sense. So. Uh, I don't have any problem sharing it, but here's, but here's the, here's the trick though. We can't just turn you loose and we can't just willy nilly go out. That's not a strategy at all. Uh, so there is a training that has to happen. Yes. You have to know what you're doing, what you're looking for there, because there are some moving parts and it does take some wherewithal to be able to do it. And this may not be for everybody, uh, but you do have to go through it and you do have to be able to do it. So, we, we, are, we do have a sourcing affiliate training program. Um, now, if you're cool with that, I'm gonna go ahead because several of you have asked, asked me, so I'm going into this. This is an employment. We're not hiring you. <laughs> this is information. You can take the information from this training program and you can go and use it on your own. You can't, 
you, you can go and use it and be perfectly successful or you can leverage our platform that we've already built you can leverage and i'll go through some of what we've already built that you would have access to uh, by going through this but what this does is this would greatly compress the time for you to be able to see results and a lot of headache and a lot of money um, it probably cost us uh, just in figuring it out almost two years and probably about a quarter million dollars of just figuring it out and trying to learn uh, the process but um, if you guys are cool with it i'm gonna I'm going to go into this and just let you see the, the plan that we've laid out. We've already got several people plugged into this. Uh, here's what we cover in the, uh, in the training that we've got upcoming. Week one, we go into sourcing. We go into basically an M&A overview. We go into uh, what do you need to know about mergers and acquisitions just in general? What are some of the terms that are used? Target companies and parameters. Uh, sending out letters. You know, I told you in the beginning, I sent out 500 letters and 50 of them called me. Uh, a sourcing hack, working with brokers. If any of you guys are in the real estate market, you don't really, really want to work with brokers if you're, say, wholesaling houses. With businesses, it's completely different. Brokers actually help a lot. Um, we'll go into a lot of that. Uh, we, too, we're going to talk about the initial conversations, you know, the goal of the first phone call when they call you from one of the letters you sent. Uh, I like to say buying is selling a lot. So whenever you're buying a business, a lot of your conversation is you need to sell the owner on how you're wanting to structure it, how it's bet in their best interest. Because um, remember, 80% of them haven't even hardly thought about selling their business. And so there is some education that needs to go into that. Uh, setting expectations with the seller, setting an impactful first meeting that you go to. In week three, and by the way, this is a virtual training course. So this will be done online uh, through some uh, uh, remote groups and conference calls, uh, some webinars like this, uh, some screen time, that kind of thing. Uh, week three, collecting information. What do you need to get? We got checklists. We've got uh, different uh, workbooks that you can use to be able to know what information to get. Questions to ask. What do you look for on that first site visit? How do you need to leave that meeting? And then we'll week four, we'll go into the analysis process and uh, submitting a deal. Um, you can submit that deal to us. And this is where I'm going to talk about leveraging a lot of what we've got. You don't have to do a lot of that grunt work and analysis stuff and review and all that kind of we've got processes that can do all that uh, if you want to use if you've got your own you can do it um, but we've got it if you want it and we'll show you how to do it uh, valuations what's a company uh, what's a company worth what's because there's so many uh, ways you can value a company every one of them are right and every one of them are wrong <laughs> so what's it really worth it to you to buy it and what's it going to take? Uh, week five, we're going to go into offers and negotiations. We've got templates and forms and uh, how you structure the offer. There's several different, I've shown you uh, the, the high level of the three that we've done, but there were other mechanics involved with that and other ways to kind of in between all of that. Um, and not only that, but will help you through this whole process. And probably the most valuable part isn't even the money that you'll make from this, it's what you're gonna learn through going through the process and having access to us and my team and all that stuff. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot through the process about that buying and selling, I love that. And each week we're gonna give you tasks uh, as you move forward uh, that you can complete to be able to get you closer to your first deal. I've talked about access to our team. Uh, we've got a legal department, a finance department, an HR department, a marketing department, operations department. Um, we've built all of this out. These are all the hard pieces I was telling you that took so long. <laughs> we've got it all in place. They know, they know everything about what we do, what we look for, what to look for, all that stuff. Plus we've got um, what we offer in this is we offer three months free to our mastermind uh, or is included uh, into our mastermind group. Uh, this is something that's typically we charge for uh, separately, but it's something that you can get access to other members in the Blue Ocean Network. Now, I do have a disclaimer down here at the bottom that access to our professional team has to do with, um, as it relates to mergers and acquisitions with Clear Capital, which is our company, um, not if you have a loud neighbor you want to send a cease and desist letter to. So <laughs> you can't just call up our attorney and say, hey, uh, I need to divorce my wife or something like that, um, as it relates to deals, obviously. So you can leverage our strength. And that was my biggest challenge 
really starting out is I didn't have anybody. I didn't, I had no background. I had no, no track record. And that was, it's kind of like the cart and the horse or chicken and the egg. It's kind of, you know, like you go to a, you're 18 and, and you go into a bank to get a loan, but they won't give you a loan because you've never had a loan, but you can't ever have a loan if they won't give it to you. It's that whole thing. So that's a lot to work through. But if you've got other people you can leverage and other teams you can leverage and kind of have uh, the backing of like clear capital or something to uh, be able to leverage that goes, guys, that goes so far. Um, after you close on your first deal, um, we put our acquisition associates on our website. So folks that have gone through our program and they brought the first deal, we've got it closed. Um, uh, we put them on our team uh, listed on the website there. Uh, we do have several tools that are going to be needed. Now, these tools took years to develop um, over time, and they've been tweaked a hundred times. But, um, you know, what's included in that is a large, or the target company breakdown. We've got several templates of letters that we have uh, crafted that we just, that just work. Uh, phone scripts. What do you say when you get on the phone with them? We've, we've ironed all that out. Um, an analysis worksheet. So how do you, what information do you get and then how do you crunch the numbers and how does it all make sense and what, what's paying too much and not, uh, we've got all that stuff. Meeting structures. What do you do when you meet with a seller? What are the important questions to ask? What are the things you need to look for? Um, at the end of the day, business is business and most of them are pretty much, uh, you have, you have customers, you have employees, you have income and you have expenses. <laughs> and a lot of running a business is just making sure all of that and finding people uh, who can help with that. Um, information checklist. Again, what is all the information you need? LOI templates. Um, what the purpose of this program here, this training program, is to get you to an LOI, to get you to a deal where we've got a signed agreement, where we've put something together that both sides agree on. Now, after LOI, there's you know, there's still some due diligence and purchase agreements, I'm not getting into all that. That's all stuff we'll, we'll talk about, but uh, that's our goal. And then of course we offer an unlimited updates to all these things that we'll give a, give a Dropbox link, all the folder, uh, files will be in there. As we update them, we update them in the Dropbox so that you're able to have the most recent information. Plus for folks that uh, do enroll uh, within, um, 24 hours, I'll do your first three phone calls for you. So 24 hours from now, if you enroll by what time is it? I don't even know. It's, uh, uh, it's only eight o'clock. So nine o'clock Eastern time for those of you that um, enroll within the next 24 hours. If, once you mail a letter, somebody calls you, um, I will call them back with you on the phone. You can hear exactly what I say, what questions I ask, how to set the appointment, I'll do it all for you. This is a guy, Jonathan Wright. He's out of Richmond, Virginia. He's one of our um, partners who helps us with these acquisitions. He's got a full-time job uh, doing something else, and he's already earned close to 50 grand uh, to date just this year, um, just doing this part-time. And he told me the other day, he's got, I've, in fact, I've got uh, two in Omaha that are about to close and one in Virginia there in Richmond uh, that he found, and they are, we're basically 45 days from closing those out. Uh, probably 30 days from one, 45 days from the other, getting those closed out. Um, he is doing very, very well um, doing this, again, part-time. Um, so here's what, if you work with us as one of our sourcing partners, again, we're not hiring you. You can take all this information and do it all on your own, okay? I'll show you how to do it on your own. If you need to leverage us in our systems, and this is where, um, Abe, when you ask the question, how does it benefit us? We can't be everywhere. And a lot of the, um, if we can have folks that we can partner with, we can share the wealth with you. We want the businesses. That whole right side of that column there where the submarine was, uh, if you remember that, that's where a huge amount of money can be made. This is the quickest, but the biggest is on the other side. And we've got, we're going to show you all that or a lot of that in the training stuff that we do that I'm talking about here. I'm not getting into it tonight, but uh, that's the advantage for us partnering with you guys to do it. So if you want to leverage us, that's the whole goal of this. Um, 
If you don't, that's okay too. It's fine. You can go do this by yourself. But if you partner with us, here's what you'll make. Um, where we do a lot of the work, we, we coach you through it, that kind of thing. And, th and I use the three examples that I went through uh, as examples of, of what you would make if you brought us those deals, all right? Um, Georgia, like I said, we didn't make anything on the flip of the real estate, so there was no money to split there. But we're going to split anywhere from 25 to 50% based on each deal. Now, whether it's 25 at a minimum or 50 at a maximum, really what determines that number is it's largely determined by any capital expense that needs to go into the business. So, so if we're going to cash out, you know, say, uh, you know, half a million dollars, um, then it, it would be a situation where if it needs a roof and air conditioning units and a parking lot, that's, that's going to eat into that money that's made in the beginning because it obviously uh, we got to invest in the business or, or if there's some other major capital expense that has to happen, then it would be a, a lower split. But if it's ready to walk in, like light, uh, the, uh, the uh, what's the one, uh, Tennessee, the one in Tennessee I gave you, it was walk-in ready. We didn't have to do a darn thing to that place. It was pristine. That would be an example of a 50% split. So to give you an idea, that's kind of where it, where those parameters are. But, uh, but you can see here how that would work out. East Tennessee, like I said, we uh, cashed out $100,000. If we would have uh, split 25% of that, 25 grand would have gone to you. 50% would have been 50 grand. West Tennessee, that's the all three locations. If you'd have brought us that deal, then. We've got, uh, we cashed out $607,000, a 25% uh, split. That probably, two of those locations did need a lot of work um, on the inside primarily. The outsides looked pretty good. Inside did need some, um, um, pro probably about $100,000 worth between the two. So that one would have been a little bit less, but let's say if it was the bottom line there, 25%, 150 grand on that one, not bad. That's not a bad payday, guys. Um, and then 300,000 if it's a 50% split. Uh, so I hope that makes sense, but that's basically how this would pan out if you'd have brought us those deals there. Uh, another guy that I love to death, uh, Ben Kaiser. In fact, just had a baby, he's 31 years old. Um, uh, just had a baby last week and just a super guy. But anyway, he works full-time as a youth pastor. Uh, he's made over 120 grand this year finding deals for us part time. He, like I said, he's a full time youth pastor, and uh, and he loves it. He's smart with money. He's he had already been doing well in the stock market and uh, wanted to do something else. And uh, and he'll tell you the same thing. The biggest he said he said Chris, you wouldn't have had to pay me a dime. Just what I've learned from going through this process is is more valuable than any money I've ever made. So to to kind of go through um, the the value that we're willing to bring here. Um, and again, the advantage to us is being able to duplicate uh, and partner uh, with ourselves. But here's how this, here's how this shakes out. The five weekly trainings, we've got the same, is this is going to be the same information that we provide during a three day live training. Now this three day live training is, I mean, we charge almost $9,000 for this thing. This is an intense boot camp, hands-on. We go through. We've got one starting next week uh, that's full already, and um, this is something that uh, we charge nine thousand, almost nine thousand dollars for. Uh, but this is the same information that we have in that boot camp. We're just doing it virtually here. Um, access to our professional team. It takes, on average, and this is conservative, guys. When, when somebody brings us a deal for our team to look at it, analyze it, <clears throat> make the offer, all that, it takes about 10 hours. And uh, our guys charge $250 an hour. Our attorney, our CPA, our marketing guy, uh, go price it out. That's a, that's a very fair uh, hourly wage. That's what they charge when they have other clients. Um, but working exclusively for us uh, in, on our deals, um, 10 hours of that is about what it would take per for just one deal. If you just brought us one deal, it's $2,500 worth of just professional time. Um, again, that's per deal. Uh, the three months mastermind I was telling you about, this is something that is huge where we can learn from each other. We can um, converse back and forth, collaborate. What deals are you working on? Uh, but this is access to other deal makers and coaches along the way. Um, of course, I'm heavily involved in this as well. A lot of my team, 
Uh, we'll have our uh, our professionals, you know, talking about legal stuff, all that type of um, information, financial information, marketing information, all that. Um, and this is something at nine ninety five a month. We're gonna we're gonna give you three months of it. The toolkit that we've got, all those, I mean, 20 hours, I mean, honestly, it took a lot more than that, but a lot of this was developed by our professionals, our CPAs, our attorneys, I mean, putting together contracts, LOIs, uh, checklists, uh, a lot of our operational consultants uh, that we've used put this together. I mean, it easily uh, cost us $5,000 to put, put those documents and tools together. Uh, the live training calls, um, the three calls I got, guys, um, my time is worth a lot and I'll close a deal for you. <laughs> it's $200 a call, um, is the value on that $600 plus we've got a, um, the, the recordings of all the, the different, the five weeks that we're going to go through. Uh, those are something that we package up and do offer, uh, to folks for nine ninety five. dollars but again, we're going to throw that in there, but the total value of this, of this whole thing, I mean, you're talking 21 grand, which is dirt cheap, dirt cheap. If we, we spent probably a quarter million dollars over two years to figure this out. Um, this is extremely cheap. But again, like I said, the reason that we're doing this is we want to be able to partner with people who get it and who understand it. This is something that uh, we typically at 90% off practically is 24, not uh, 2445. Um, but we're doing this now. This is probably a price we're not going to offer again, but that's 998. Um, again, $20,000 worth of stuff here for under a thousand bucks. Plus, um, if you need it, we have payment plans available. So, um, for folks that want to plug in and they need some, need a little bit of help with that, that's okay. Uh, we can absolutely do that. So bottom line is you, know, you do need to apply for this. It's a short application. We just want to know a little bit about you. Uh, but this is blueoceanworkshop.com, www.blueoceanworkshop.com. Uh, you can fill that out. Again, the first, uh, there's three calls, by the way, uh, is for anyone that signs up in the next uh, 24 hours. Um, that fills that out. It doesn't cost anything to fill that out. Um, and you'll talk to Alan Thomas. Alan will um, ask you some more questions. Uh, he'll give you a call. He'll give you all the details on that. Now, this is our not for everyone guarantee because we know this isn't for everyone. So we do have uh, the option here. If you um, say, look, this isn't gonna be a fit. This isn't gonna work out. Um, and there's really two reasons people don't participate in this. Number one, they don't understand it. Or number two, they just have zero money, um, which, which is cool. I mean, we understand, uh, if folks aren't able to do it, that's okay. Um, and like I said, we, we know this isn't for everybody. Um, but if you feel this isn't for you after the first week, you know what, we'll refund your money. That's okay. Um, we don't have an issue with that, but if all we did was close one deal, would it be worth it to you? If all we did was close one deal. Um, in fact, uh, most folks that have gone through this with us, they'll tell you, um, even if they don't close the deal, it's the information itself is just absolutely, uh, absolutely worth it. So next steps, this is it, blueoceanworkshop.com. Uh, you can complete that application. You'll also be getting an email uh, from Alan if you've been on here tonight. Uh, you'll be able to um, set an appointment, by the way, when you fill out that application. Set an appointment to talk to Alan. Uh, he's got his schedule in there. Uh, he will um, give you a call at the time that you pick and uh, be able to talk with you. And then after all the review of your application, they will get up with you uh, if you set that appointment there. Now the registration link uh, for this particular um, offer here does close Friday at midnight. After Friday, it's gonna go away. We've got classes starting next week that we're gonna be uh, really focused on. Uh, so. Um, so this will close out again. That's uh, buyingbelowoceans.com. What questions uh, do we have here? I want to make sure I've answered all those. Uh, let's see. James has a question. It says, will, will, will we be able to run the numbers to get an idea that the numbers will work? And it, Yes, James. In fact, we, we've got calculators that we have built 
that we will train you on how to use, that will um, show you what numbers to plug in, what numbers matter, and it'll spit out a number to you and tell you if it's gonna work or not. If it doesn't, you tweak the numbers and you'll be able to know. So yes, to answer your question, uh, you will be able to do that. Um, let's see, somebody asked here, is the, do you have to sign personal guarantees for the lease? Okay, so um, on the leases that the business signs, we've actually, in most cases, yes, <laughs> you do. In our case, usually not, or if so, it's an extremely limited um, because of how we structure our deals. So that's another very important piece to this that some people get trapped in is personal guarantees. If you can stay, if you can avoid that, uh, you'll want to, and we'll show you how to do it. Um, let's see here. That is, all right, any more questions? Let's see, with all these companies, Company's property does it work like a traditional wholesale deal where the property is under contract and is sold to another buyer who is provides the promise cash and due diligence, or does he transact to a double closing? All right, Abe, we've done it both ways. What Abe is asking is, is can you assign it and then the investor buys it directly from the owner, or do we buy it and then turn around immediately at closing and sell it again and have two closings? Two closings is more expensive. Um, but we have done it. Um, we've done. There's advantages to both ways, and there's disadvantages to both ways. So, so to answer your question, Abe, yes, uh, we do both. Um, James asked, "Do we get anything on the business sales side?" Great question, James. Uh, we actually that's we have a whole nother piece <laughs> that goes into uh, profiting on the business sales side, and that is something that we do discuss during our training. And if that is something you want to do then absolutely. Uh, in, fact, in fact, you can make money all the way to the end, um, whenever, during operations and during the business sales side. So um, it just depends on how much someone wants to be involved uh, during that process. So it, it's really different uh, preferences for different people. So that's primarily what we, let me answer these real quick, okay. Um, so to answer your question, it's it, yes. The answer is yes. It just depends on how much you want to be involved. And we have a whole another section that we can go into for that. Um, and let's see, I think I've hit most of these questions here. Great questions, great group tonight. Um, if you have any more questions, whenever uh, you talk to Alan, he'll be glad to answer some for you. Uh, if he doesn't have the answer, um, then he'll get the answer. Uh, but I look forward to working uh, with you guys. I mean, I'm, this uh, this upcoming one's going to be a lot of fun. We've already got a good group uh, that uh, that is uh, on board for next week. So we'd love to have you guys jump in as well. But uh, send us any questions that you've got. Um, this will this will be an exciting time. I promise you, this will be something that could literally change your zip code. This could change a lot of things about what you're doing. Um, and there's a way you can do it and build in freedom at the same time. So you're not killing yourself. We'll go into a lot of that too. So, uh, but I appreciate you guys jumping on tonight. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Um, make sure you hit blueoceansworkshop.com and I'll put that link back up here to sit here for a second while we've got, uh, while we're finishing up, but I'll go ahead and sign off. Appreciate you guys spending an hour and 20 minutes with me tonight and you guys have a good rest of the week and we will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.